Today is Tuesday, March 3rd, 1964. Jury selection in the Jack Ruby trial finally concludes. A lawyer was held in contempt and the eyes of the world descend upon Dallas. I'm Eric Bushman. And I'm Brandon Birmingham. This is the State of Texas versus Jack Ruby, the original trial of the century. Today, during the last day of jury selection, the hallways outside of the courtroom erupted into a shouting melee when Jack Ruby's lawyers, Melvin Belli and Joe Tonahill, discovered a man passing out press releases that disparaged Ruby's main defense. A bulwark of Ruby's defense is the claim that he suffered a variant of psychomotor epilepsy when he shot accused assassin Lee Harvey Oswald. Maurice A. Melford, director of the National Epilepsy League, and two helpers walked the hallway outside of the courtroom, passing out literature in brown envelopes marked epilepsy that read, You don't have to worry too much about a patient in a psychomotor seizure. You will read in novels and see in the movies of all kinds of dramatizations, spiced up stories about what psychomotor epileptics do, murders, criminal activities, etc. That is nonsense, end quote. Ruby's lawyers ignited like twin missiles because three possible jurors might have been exposed to the literature which directly contradicted their main defense. Based on all of that, the defense again asked for a change of venue, and again that request was denied. When asked in court, the potential jurors all denied having seen or read the literature passed out by Mr. Melford. The Thunderbolt, the white man's viewpoint, was among the pieces of extremist literature Chief Attorney Melvin Belli sought to introduce in order to support his request of Judge Joe B. Brown to change the venue of the trial, moving it somewhere else in Texas. After one of the potential jurors was excused because he said some of the news on the radio and television and some of the things he read in newspapers had caused him not to be fair, Chief Defense Attorney Belli called the Thunderbolt vile, the filthiest, nastiest thing I've ever seen. We don't have that kind of filth in California. We didn't have the president assassinated in California. The 12th and final juror was seated at 2.30. Miss Louise Malone was sworn in shortly before 2.30 after Judge Wilson denied the defense's motion to strike her from the jury. District Attorney Henry Wade said he was satisfied that the jurors were all fair and impartial. If we hadn't been, we would have challenged them, he said. We'll know more about their jury service, of course, after the verdict is in. Chief Defense Counsel Melvin Belli described the 12 jurors as an intelligent group of people and that he would be happy with these jurors. If they were from any other city except Dallas and in any other case but this one, I've said all along it's impossible to get a jury in this case in Dallas County. Testimony in the trial of the century is scheduled to begin tomorrow morning in Judge Wilson's courtroom at the Criminal Courts Building here in Dallas. Jury bailiff Joe Mabra has been tasked by Judge Brown with making sure that jurors don't see anything on television associated with the Jack Ruby trial, the assassination of President Kennedy, or anything that might influence their verdict. The prohibition includes shows like Perry Mason or The Defenders. Mr. Maber said, I'll have to stay up late, thinking of jurors who might want to stay up and watch some of the late, late shows. Once jurors are selected, they have been sequestered, living in makeshift jurors' quarters in a part of the Dallas County Jail. It is possible, should all of the jurors see something that make it impossible for them to be fair in Mr. Ruby's trial, they might be excused, leaving less than the required 12. Chief Ruby attorney Melvin Belli expressed concern that Texas law does not allow for an alternate juror. He said if one of these jurors got sick and couldn't serve, we would have to go through this whole thing again. In California, we have up to four alternates on some juries. District Attorney Henry Wade and his team have filed their proposed witness list with the court. We know that Mr. Wade's case will consist mainly of police, newsmen, and of course the Dallas County Medical Examiner Earl Rose. Among other witnesses listed is Doyle Lane, a Western Union employee. District Attorney Wade said that the state's case would be presented chronologically and should be completed by noon on Thursday. Quote, We'll prove Ruby killed Oswald, he said, and may prove a motive, even though we don't have to under our law. Mr. Wade said he plans to call between 15 and 20 witnesses, beginning with Ruby's whereabouts at the time of President Kennedy's assassination through the shooting of Oswald. Wade acknowledged that he would not include his psychiatric witnesses in his case, saving them instead to rebut Jack Ruby's insanity defense. Chief Defense Attorney Melvin Belli said he believed the Ruby murder trial would last about a month, adding that he might call up to 75 witnesses. He said there will only be about 10 major witnesses. Ruby's witnesses will be called to support his contention that he was temporarily insane at the time he killed Lee Harvey Oswald. Belli also said that two noted psychiatrists, Dr. Frederick Gibbs and Dr. Carl Menninger, refused to testify for the defense. Both said they would testify only in an impartial capacity for the court. 
who did not want to enter an adversarial proceeding. Mr. Belli said that he is eager to get the trial moving without delay. There were certain heated moments during jury selection, numerous outbursts, raised voices in a tantrum that earned Jasper, Texas lawyer and Ruby defender hulking Joe Tonahill a $25 fine today after Judge Brown denied the defense's request for another extra defense strike, which would have been their fourth, Mr. Tonahill snapped a pencil in half and hurled it to the courtroom floor. A piece of the jagged pencil bounced off the bottom of Judge Brown's bench. I'm going to have to hold you in contempt. I've been very tolerant, Judge Brown said. The order brought Mr. Tonahill's partner, Melvin Belli, storming to his feet in protest, claiming that Mr. Tonahill's outburst was out of anger and not out of disrespect to the court. Judge Brown didn't budge. The court cannot forget it, Mr. Tonahill. That will cost you $25. Ruby was visited by a doctor a short time before jury selection began yesterday. Defense psychiatrist Manfred Guttmacher, who visited Jack Ruby in his jail cell. Dr. Guttmacher is the chief medical officer for the Supreme Bench of Baltimore and a renowned psychiatrist. He visited Mr. Ruby in December, one of two specialists to examine Ruby at that time. Dr. Guttmacher said back then that Mr. Ruby was depressed beyond measure over President Kennedy's assassination and unconscious hatred for Oswald, the accused assassin. As of Monday, he does not look good, as when I saw him last, a psychiatrist said. He seems to be deteriorating. He does not look well in general. He's much more anxious. Even Mr. Ruby's attorneys described their client as nervous as a cat and deteriorating, even saying that he was close to being incoherent. Dr. Guttmacher is one of several psychiatrists and psychologists due to arrive here to testify in Ruby's trial. Proceedings were delayed almost an hour because presiding judge Joe Brown was ordered by his doctor to stay home and recover from a chest cold. Defense attorney Melvin Belli said he was more worried about Judge Brown's health in the proceeding in Jack Ruby's murder trial drew up a makeshift get well card today. On a lined piece of notebook paper, he scrawled to Judge Brown, we wish you all well, regain your health and come back. Signed, Melvin Belli. Mr. Belli then passed the paper to reporters who signed it one by one. Veteran jurist Judge Frank Wilson took over in Judge Brown's absence. Judge Wilson received his law degree in 1923 from Baylor University in Waco, a member of the first law school class there. He's the former president of the Dallas Bar Association and a former congressman. He's been on the bench for a decade. He took over the trial as both sides were trying to end the frustrating search for the final two jurors, a process that began some three weeks ago on February 17th with the selection of the first juror, Max Causey. Once selected, all jurors are sequestered, meaning they're not allowed to return home until after the trial. Jurors have been allotted one beer per day, leading Mr. Causey to jokingly ask the bailiff who is in charge of the jury to go to a restaurant that serves courts. The trial formally styled the State of Texas versus Jack Rubenstein, alias Jack Ruby, formally began three weeks ago with the start of jury selection. Now that the jury has been fully selected, the court is in recess for the evening as Dallas, the nation, and the world ready themselves for the beginning of testimony tomorrow morning. Here is what we expect will happen. The first step is referred to as the arraignment. The prosecutor will read the indictment to Mr. Ruby and the jury. The indictment is a formal charge that the 53-year-old owner of the Carousel nightclub murdered Lee Harvey Oswald, the alleged assassin of President John F. Kennedy, with malice aforethought. After the indictment is ready, it will be up to Jack Ruby's attorney to enter his plea. After the plea is entered, the state could make an opening statement, a preview of things to come, and the testimony for the jurors. However, District Attorney Henry Wade said he will definitely not make an opening statement. The next step in the trial process will be the state's case-in-chief, wherein they must prove the charge of murder through witnesses. Mr. Wade predicts that he will only need two or three days to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Mr. Ruby is guilty. After the state finishes, or rests, the defense will be brought up to bat. In this case, the main defense will be not guilty by reason of insanity. The defense will have the burden of proving Ruby was insane at the time of killing Lee Harvey Oswald. Mr. Belli says it will take about 10 days. Once the defense rests, the state will bounce back with rebuttal testimony, trying to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Ruby is sane. The defense may thereafter present evidence to rebut the state, and the state could thereafter present more evidence to rebut the defense. How long the judge will allow that to happen is undetermined. When both sides close, the judge will write the charge which defines the law on every issue raised by the evidence. The high point of the trial follows when the attorneys make their arguments to the jury, their last chance to use their persuasive powers. When the last decibel of argument fades away, a hush will settle over the courtroom, and the jury will leave its seats and enter the deliberation room. Inside, the jury will elect a foreman and reread the charge. Then discussions will begin. How long those jurors deliberate and what their verdict will be, only time will tell.
The transcript of the trial of Jack Ruby is publicly available online from the Texas State Library and Archives Commission, Texas Digital Archive. You can find the transcript in the Court of Criminal Appeals Centralized Court Case Files Collection. I used a number of articles from the Dallas Times Herald that are on location at the Sixth Floor Museum, donated by reporter Bob Finley. From March 1st, I used Finley's article titled First Testimony Nears for Ruby. I also used the articles Bailiffs Must Stay on Toes, Detectives to Be First on Ruby Stand, Belli Says Trial May Last a Month. That was all from March 1st. On March 2nd, I used Defense Employees Last Challenge. March 3rd, I used 11th Ruby Trial Juror Qualifies and Murder Mind Author at Trial. I also used Ruby Trial Gets Second Judge, 11th Juror Following Delay, March 3rd, 1964. Friends Praise 11th Juror and new Ruby judge is a veteran jurist. I also used an article written by Carl Freund and Hugh Ainsworth, 1964, quote, Ruby shot, then muttered he hoped Oswald died, detective tells court. That was published in the Dallas Morning News on March the 5th on page 1. I got that from the online news bank.